Hi everyone, I'm Sophia Bush. I am an actress, an activist, and a podcast host, and I thrive off of information from trusted sources. This is Need to Know, a series that will help sort through your most pressing questions through conversations with reliable sources. Today I'm here with Jessica Malati Rivera to talk about the question that is looming over all of our heads. When will this be over? And what will the end look like? So we are six plus months into a pandemic on our shores and we're looking at the effects globally as an expert scientist, as an epidemiologist, as a science communicator, what can you tell us? Is there an end in sight? There is an end in sight. We just don't know exactly how far away that end is. I, and a frustrating epidemiology answer is always, it depends. It depends on so many things. Mm. Can you tell us a little bit about what that means when, when scientists say it depends? So it really depends on you. It depends on the choices that you make today. It depends on the choices that you make in the coming weeks and the coming months. What we really need to see is disease transmission go down. You know, right now we're averaging about 40,000 cases a day, about 1,000 deaths per day. That is super high. And we need to be seeing those cases well under 10,000 at the very minimum for us to be seeing a meaningful slowing down of the disease. Do you think we'll be in masks forever? We will not be in masks forever, but for as long as we have high disease transmission, we're going to be in masks. And I think masks are actually going to probably help make flu season more tolerable. I will likely anticipate masks until a vaccine is available and probably through vaccination to make sure that enough people are actually becoming vaccinated and stopping the spread of the disease. So when we think about going into 2021, what precautions should we be taking this holiday season? So we want people to continue to have relationships with their family members and their loved ones and celebrate the holidays. We just want them to reduce their risk as they do it. It's kind of like, you know, the abstinence mentality. It doesn't work. It's not going to work. So we want to have people making safe choices and making safe choices means thinking about others so that you are not spreading the disease to people. What do you think we can all do to get to the end sooner? Because this is a perfect storm of politics, public health, and, and a timeline that is undefined, which is hard for people. What do you think people need to know right now? I have believed from day one that pandemics are inherently political because viruses don't care about national borders. They don't care about state borders. Mm -hmm. And it crossed from one hemisphere to the other because of that. We need to vote in November in a way that is mm -hmm. pro-science. We need to vote in a way that is thinking about the future of our planet and the future of our health and the future of our kids' health. So that's mm -hmm. one. Um, number two, to check your sources to be really, to be an informed individual and to be your own scientist. Do the extra search, pause before resharing and think critically before you do. Mm -hmm. um, and third, you know, empathy. We all need empathy right now. Think about mm -hmm. the implications of what you'd talk about, especially when it comes to COVID-19, comparing it to H1N1, for instance. And remember that there are 200,000 families right now who are devastated. 200,000 families that likely had to lose their families over the phone because they weren't allowed to be next to them in the hospital as they died. Mm. So let's think about the heartbreak here. Let's think about the compassion that we can be having towards others and let's act accordingly. Right. We're in the middle of an infodemic and not only is there a lot of misinformation, but there's a lot of disinformation. A lot of lies about public health are being published, not questioned. How as an expert, are you advising people to get through the infodemic and find really trusted sources? Yeah, so an unfortunate byproduct of every infectious disease outbreak is an infodemic. I mean, that can be traced back to even smallpox. When the vaccine was being studied, people actually thought that you could become a cow if you got the smallpox vaccine because of how it was derived from a similar virus from cowpox. We as science communicators are working really hard to debunk them as fast as they come out. 
can I ask you some questions about some of the conspiracy theories I've heard so that you can give us the receipts on how to fight them the next time, you know, crazy uncle so-and-so decides to send a link to a conspiracy theory site? I, I, I need some support here and I imagine that our viewers do too. Absolutely. Okay, so I'm gonna run you through a couple of things. There is a conspiracy that COVID-19 is a man-made virus. What do you have to say about that? It absolutely was not. And science actually has some pretty cool receipts on how to prove that it was not. So okay. when you are isolating a virus from somebody who is infected, you can actually determine the genetic sequence that that person has. And viruses have a functional family tree. You can trace it back based on the differences and the similarities between somebody's genetic sequence and somebody else's and determine kind of where it derived from. Okay, so that's very helpful. Conspiracy theory one dashed. When we talk about <laughs> mutations, do those changing genetic sequences, do, does that mean the virus is mutating? Is is it mutating out of control? Is it big? Is it small? What, what does it mean for us? Viruses mutating is a completely natural process of how viral transmission works. And you can think about it like a tiny typo. And a lot of times those typos are very insignificant. The virus is actually mutating at a very slow pace. So that should calm people's concerns about the virus becoming so different that potentially vaccine research would be outpaced by the changing virus. It's actually not. It's like watching a cactus grow. It's very, very slow. Okay, so that's a good thing for us to know. Yes. When it comes to being a collector of information and trying to make informed choices, I think we all need to practice discernment when it comes to checking our sources and pausing before resharing to read past the headline and making sure that what you're sharing is repeatable and not inciting fear. Thanks so much for joining us on this segment of Need to Know. You can catch my full conversation with Jessica Malati Rivera talking all things COVID-19 on my podcast, Work in Progress. <laughs>